Probably will not even come out of the game tonight for Minnesota, Vincent Greer, and for Northwestern, Vedran Vukasic. Yeah, two players that have had outstanding senior years. Greer injured early, but now has it going. Speaking of lineups tonight, plenty of seniors in the starting lineup. It is senior night for the Wildcats, and both Vukasic and Hashad were honored prior to the start of tonight's game. Dan Munson at the shootout today, a shoot around, pretty optimistic. I think Munson feels pretty confident by the way his guys have been playing lately, but still a lot of work to be done to have a shot at something very special in the NCAA tournament. They've been playing better recently, had some big home wins over some quality Big Ten teams. And his Gophers on the road tonight. And off the opening tip. Three officials confer out of bounds to Minnesota, and the Gophers will get the first opportunity as Bill Carmody. Be interesting to see how Carmody's team reacts from the other night. They were really devastated with a tough loss against Ohio State in position to upset the conference's number one team and did not get it done. That has to drain you both physically and emotionally. They were right there to beat the number one team in the conference and let it get away. Weimer's your lead official tonight. And Minnesota works down to 15 seconds on the opening possession. Huktel with a look inside and now gives up his dribble and we're down to 10. Mo Hargrove, step back jumper, good. And Minnesota 2-0 start. Mo Hargrove coming off his best game of the year, scored 17 against Illinois, was 8 for 9 from the floor. Hudson pretty pleased with the way his seniors played that night, but Illinois is awfully good as demonstrated today, Coach, by the win at Michigan State. Boy, if I were going into that Big Ten tournament, the team I would not want to play is the Fighting yes. Illini. I agree. Deep round, a great effort at East Lansing, and Illinois hit a number of threes in the second half to pull it out. Speaking of threes, that's Vukasic missing. And off the rebound, Minnesota comes back with the ball and Vince Greer. Hargro, nice fake inside, and they penetrate and move the ball around nicely for Boone, who just ran the three. Good ball reversal. Adam Boone had a clean look at the three-pointer, just didn't go down. Greg Moore, the fine freshman for Northwestern, a fearless competitor out there, could knock down some shots. Minnesota starting out 2-3 zone. That's not their primary defense. They'd like to play man-to-man, -man, but they're going to force the Wildcats to make those outside shots. These two teams, two of the worst scoring teams in the conference. Good skip pass to Moore for three, and it remains 2-0, and a foul inside. We'll keep this possession in the favor of Northwestern. The series goes back many years, dominated by the Gophers, but Northwestern is going for the sweep, and that hasn't happened since the year 1976. Not only for the sweep, for their fifth consecutive win yes. over Minnesota. Have to go back and... Northwestern lore to find out when they've beaten a conference team five in a row. Cote misses on everything. The only other team Northwestern has dominated as of late is Purdue. Purdue has a, the improbable chance tomorrow of upsetting Ohio State in Columbus. Here's Greer with a crossover inside. Minnesota plays on a 2 nothing lead. Mo Hargrove, the only point so far tonight, Coach. Yeah, and he's the only player for Minnesota that has started every game this year. Coach Munson has changed his lineup dramatically throughout the year. Two teams combined as one of six shooting. Here comes Doyle in the front court, and Northwestern will try at the basket again. They are still filing in tonight. We're going to have a huge crowd this evening. Yeah, it's a great crowd to honor these seniors on their final game in this arena. The zone has the Wildcats a little confused right now. Not quite sure how they want to attack it. Vukasic has had one look at the basket so far. Now Cote is called for traveling. And Northwestern continues to be held without a point. Cats go with some pressure against the trap. Boone tried to get through it and he got fouled. Yeah, a little token three-quarter court press by... The Wildcats kind of got Minnesota out of sync a little, but they got the uh, foul by Boone. Maintained possession for the Golden Gophers. To the corner for a stamper jumper. He misses. It remains a 2-0 score. Hashad with a rebound. 
great rebound by Ashad. He just went up and tore it down. Ashad didn't play the last time these two teams went at it, and a typical backdoor of Brooke Carmody, very effective there for Northwestern's first points. 16-45, opening half. It was anticipated to be a low-scoring game. That's the way we're starting anyway. And Minnesota called for traveling. Vincent Gerst found a seam in the defense, got to the basket, but moved his pivot foot. Here's a great basket cut by Cote. Gets a scoring pass. Defending Northwestern is like defending no other team in the conference because of the way they use the back door and shoot the threes often. The matchup zone, uh, they're the only team in the league that use it as their primary defense. Very patient on offense. Uh, most of Northwestern's games are going to be in the 50s. The game the other night, typical of that against Ohio State, in position to win, mid-50s. Cats had the ball and the lead with about a minute to go and could not hang on. Those are the kind of road wins, Jim, that win you Big Ten championships. Oh, somewhere yes. you have to come and make a play at the end of the ball game, and the Buckeyes were able to do it. Yeah, why are we surprised that Ohio State was able to do that? Buckeyes won at Michigan State recently, and that was a huge conference win as well. Rear steps through the pressure and heads toward the basket, and now has to bring it back out. We're keeping an eye on Vincent Greer tonight. Here's Puck Tell. Fine walk on. Good pressure on Minnesota. This one's headed toward us. Good play, coach. An assist to Moore. <laughs> Quick hands. <laughs> Just about to reach the 16 minute and under television timeout. It is a 4 2 a Northwestern lead. Five seconds and Greer. <laughs> Vince able to save it in the corner and keep the possession alive. Ballcats forced to miss, but weren't there to claim the, the rebound. Gives the Gophers a new possession. Mohart has got to look for his shot. He, he's been very unselfish, but he's one of the players that has to put it up. Sweet move by Dan Coleman, who found a seam in the baseline. And Minnesota finally scores again, reties the game here at four. Coleman is one of their better offensive players. They've been using Pucktail a lot for defense, using Shamala for defense. A shot, a shot against the double team. Finds Bukasic on the left side. He is still scoreless in the first almost five minutes of the opening half. With Jim Dutch and Jim Barber in a 4-4 game. The regular season finale with the Cats and the Gophers. Here is Zach Pucktail. for the Gophers. And it still doesn't resolve the point. <laughs> Pucktail had it every place but in, rolled across the whole rim, did not go. And Western will spend a lot of time on its possessions, so defending, particularly in the last 15 seconds, is pretty important. We're five and a half minutes in, and it's a 4-4 game. As we're playing like the first team of 20 will win this. <laughs> In this possession under 10 for Northwestern. This is where the Cats go to work. Okay, draws a double team. But before anything happens, a violation. And with that, a timeout. 4-4 four, four is our score. The Gophers and the Wildcats in a cold shooting start here at Evanston.
Oh, uh, Scott? Mm-hmm. Uh, did you possibly switch chairs with me? No, not me. Are you sure? Yeah. Good luck finding your chair, everyone. Okay. Okay. ABC News Now. Finally, something designed for your hectic life. Imagine programs 15 minutes long and tightly packed with all the good stuff you actually want. Hit the ground running with ABC News Now. ABC News Now. 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 ABC News Now. Get it now. Now. ABC News. Anytime, anywhere. Get it now. Now imagine being able to get it all. Anytime and anywhere. Hey, that's why you need ABC News Now. Coach, the crowd here tonight, it's going to be a pleasant surprise to Northwestern officials. They're telling us earlier today, maybe 5,000. We're having trouble finding empty seats here, I think, because it's a football recruiting weekend that a lot of those families and their kids are in. But uh, they're still filing in, and I think you're going to have trouble finding location tonight. It's a great crowd. The Wildcats have played well here. The big win over Iowa, win over Wisconsin, took Ohio State down to the buzzer. Uh, they've seen some great basketball here this year. And trying to gain a win tonight, as we mentioned in our opening, for some momentum into Indianapolis. Both of these teams will play on Thursday. Each team having trouble scoring the ball. They play good defense, particularly Northwestern, one of the finer defensive teams across the country. Looks like Minnesota's trying to play Northwestern style to slow it down, go deep into the shot clock. And with that, a turnover. Two against one. Doyle, a nice move to the basket, and Northwestern regains the advantage. Mohammed Ashad is one of the best steal moves in the league. Anticipates well, gets in passing lanes. Jamal Abu Samala trying to go to the basket. A foul called inside, and now the pace starting to pick up a little bit, and that will happen with full court pressure. Shamal is an interesting story, not recruited by any Division I schools, but here his shot steps into the passing lane. Nice two-man throw over the goal for the basket. But Shamala from Shakopee, Minnesota, was recruited by D2 schools, but always wanted to play at Minnesota. So Coach Munson gave him the opportunity. Halfway into the season, he becomes the starter. Hasn't he got one of the best names in sports? Jamal Abu Shamala. It just rolls off it, the it tongue. It really does. <laughs> Missed his first free throw attempt. Gets the second one. Well, no signs early. Well, Northwestern's difficult loss the other night. What kind of effect that might have. Of course, you might say it's senior night, and everybody's feeling pretty good about the evening, so it's a good way to recover from a, a difficult loss to the conference leader. Each team coming off two losses, so we're just looking to break through with the win going into the conference tournament. Yes, it's the tournament where uh, hope springs eternal. Anybody's got an opportunity to put together a string of wins and make something special happen. Rainbow from Vatron and tipped back out nicely by Vince Scott. Yeah, nice play by Scott. Got up there and saved the possession for the Wildcats. You can't rebound and knock it back out. Doyle spinning on the baseline. Finds another open shooter. Vukasic this time knocks it down. The all-time leader in threes, Vatron Vukasic of the Wildcats. When he scores, it's more than just the basket. That's your offensive leader scoring for you, and it picks up the entire ball club. I agree. And Minnesota active. Collickson finds his shooter from the outside. And Minnesota continues to have problems scoring. Now two of just eight, and here's Doyle. Western starts tonight under 500 at 13 and 14, but have played better basketball than that record would certainly indicate. Scott shot blocked by Coleman from the other side. Great inside pass, but Dan Coleman is there to reject it. And a good, aggressive move by Adam Boone draws a foul and two free throw opportunities. I think Adam Boone had really thoughts of bringing the ball back out as he kept advancing to the basket. The lane just opened up and he had a clear path to the hoop. Mm -hmm. 
Boone, who this year scored six threes in one half. Adam Boone's a rare story, a sixth-year senior. Not often do you get a sixth-year. No. Transfer from North Carolina, had some physical problems a year ago in the NCAA grant of him a sixth year of eligibility. You think of six-year seniors, you think of Evan Eschmeyer, who played here at Northwestern, Jeff Settles at Iowa, to name a couple. Boone ahead fake, doesn't put it up, Coleman will. Shot it too strong, though, and there's Pitts, Greer Sky. Oh, Minnesota cannot throw it in the hoop. 11.47, the Gophers are stuck on six. The Cats have nine. We have a timeout. Mr. Erlacher. Oh, yeah, no problem. Happy to help. Join us in March for ESPN The Weekend at the Walt Disney World Resort. There's something for every fan. Visit ESPNTheWeekend.com today. Presented by Speedstick 24 7. Oh. You right? Yeah. There's an old football injury. Tore my rotator cuff against the Giants in the 88. Yeah. Gotta play hurt, though, right? Oh, absolutely. Actually, I. Burnt my tongue on some lentil soup last night. It really hurts. Be okay to do the show? Oh, yeah. I'll suck it up. What makes them different makes them great. Mike and Mike in the morning on ESPN Radio. Ready to elevate your golf game to the next level? Learn from the professionals at ESPN Golf Schools presented by Lexus. Enroll in the three-club tour and receive a Nike Sasquatch driver, SV Wedge, and T100 putter free. ESPN Golf Schools instruction developed by world-renowned teaching pro Hank Haney. Call 1-800-642-5528 or register online at ESPNGolfSchools.com. Improve your game through personalized instruction and the latest in equipment from Nike Golf. ESPN Golf Schools presented by Lexus. Guys, if you're not nervous, you're not alive. If you get an opportunity like this, you gotta be. I'm gonna leave it all right here. They're not getting screen. Don't get screen. No, baby. What, what, what are you doing here? It ought to hurt to get an opportunity like that. And we didn't get it done. With Northwestern leading 9-6, 11.47 left in the first half, let's remind you that this game is produced and distributed by ESPN Regional Television. With the coach, Jim Dutcher, I'm Jim Barber. Pleased to have you with us tonight as the season finale. Being presented from Northwestern University, a crowd in excess of 8,000 this evening. Tomorrow, the final Big Ten game of the regular season in Columbus, Purdue and Ohio State. Can the Boilers do it in there, Ooh. Jim? Most improbable. Yeah, it's uh, Ohio State's playing very, very well, and they'll have a full house to honor their seniors. And a chance for Ohio State to win the conference championship outright. If Purdue was able to pull a monumental upset, it'll go over well in Champaign and Iowa City. <laughs> we can tell you that much. 9-7, slight advantage for the Cats in rebounding so far. Minnesota just shooting the ball. Two of 10 for the ball. Now two of 11. Mohamed Ashad quickly into the front court. Open look because of Ashad's offense. Well done by the Wildcats to push the ball. Ashad's got two defensive rebounds that amaze me. I didn't know he was that good a jumper. I know he's a great athlete, but he's just he's ripped the ball down on the defensive glass. Leading to an Evan Seacat three, and Northwestern has its longest lead at 12-6. Cats second best in defending in the Big Ten Conference. And tonight have allowed just six points so far. On the clock, the best six going in. But Spencer Thompson, a big body, got an inside position. One of the weaknesses of the zone, you do not have man-to-man -man pickoff responsibilities, and there are some seams to get in and get that second shot. And we show you that rebounding graphic. Northwestern's rebounding usually not very good, but tonight, a strong start. Let's go, let's go, let's go. 
Like there was a game against Purdue where the Cats were over 10 minutes without a single rebound. A shot tried for three. The rebound taken down by Abu Shamala. Yeah. Wildcats are 11th in the league in rebounding, but they showed a, a little bit of desire on that glass tonight. Pollockson rolls one in. Now the rim's getting a little friendlier for the Gophers. Pollockson's coming off a good performance against Illinois. He had 10 points. Five big baskets that held him in there. In fact, his last four games, he is averaging in double figures. Seacat trying to hit a second three. Almost. And a foul called on Minnesota and a clear out by the Gophers inside. Let's take a look at Spencer Tollickson. It's a miss by Dan Coleman. Spencer gets the seam. Very strong. Takes it back up. Big hoop for the Gophers, follows that up with another inside basket. Just a little drop step, comes back into the lane and scores. And he is just a sophomore. Think of Minnesota and some of their big interior players they've had. He seems to fit some of that mold. Very physically strong, and as you mentioned, Jim, he's been playing a lot better offensively the last three or four basketball games. The Minnesota team that started the conference at all six is not the same team at this point of the season. Not NCAA tournament bound unless it can get a sensational run in Indianapolis. Great vision by Vukasic. Looked right through the defense, found them wide open on the baseline for the score. Right now, North Dresser with three seniors on the floor and a couple of freshmen. And six different scores in the game. McCarmody has his hands up for the Wildcats. Blowing some good defense here. They force Minnesota under 10 seconds on this particular possession. But Shamala bears Minnesota out with a three. Vince Greer's credit, he's not forcing anything. That time he got triple teams as he came to the basket. So he just kicked it outside to Shamala for the basket. The Gophers have hit three of the last four after a half start blocked by Tomlinson. Numbers for Minnesota led by Hargrove. Shamala, they forgot about him at the free throw line. But the possession comes up empty to Evan Seacat. Seacat, one of the several seniors honored tonight prior to this evening's game. First win over the Gophers, Craig Moore had an outstanding game with five threes. He's the player they're worried about on perimeter. And that's Moore right there. Moore had a gutty shot against Purdue with time running out of regulation of first overtime in a game where everybody thought Vukasic would get the ball. And Vukasic, uh, Bill Carmody said the timeout, he was just he was just spent, so I said, get it to the little guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was a good move. They went inside out back to Moore for the three. Big basket. Minnesota keeps the ball. We come back. Northwestern has the lead. 17-13 our score, and our time is 7.29. My name is Izzy Paskowitz, and I've been running surf camps for autistic kids for seven years. What's perfect for us is to see that screaming and the kicking when they go out, and when they turn around and ride that wave in, it's just nothing like it. And there's the parents, the tears in their eyes, saying, we've had a lot of tough times, but today was just the perfect day. Thank <laughs> you. 
Walsh Mine Arena filled the capacity. How often do we say that? <laughs> Jim Barber, Jim Dutcher. 17-13 our score. The Cats leading and shooting the three-point ball a little bit better than Minnesota. Many more opportunities anyway. Evan C. Cat, who hails from a country nearby. Larry Bird has one of those threes this evening for Northwestern. They're going to get some three-point looks against Minnesota's zone. They're sticking with that 2-3 zone through most of the possessions, trying to force the Wildcats to shoot from perimeter. Wildcats launched several threes the other night. Nobody looking on that pass, and Shimala wisely picking it up. He was alert enough, but as they try to drop down, it remains in the hands of Minnesota, but now just 11 seconds to work with. Well, that's one of those potential turnovers that turns into two points the other way. It was there. They're just fortunate to maintain possession of the ball. Working on a short shot clock with seven seconds to go. And I said his bench has outscored Northwestern 10-3 so far. Minnesota has very little from its starters to speak of offensively. In the back corner of Seacat and Moore ready to go to work for the Wildcats. Fast moving opening half. Coach Munson comes back with Zach Pucktail, takes Tollickson out of the ball game. Pucktail playing the inside spot on their 2-3 zone. Good skip by Doyle. The Seacat with Shamala quickly on him because Evan can shoot the three ball. Northwestern, Patton to move into the shot clock deep and find somebody inside. Out of bounds to Minnesota. Got the ball inside to Cote, but he just didn't get a clean catch of the ball. Fumbled it, and that was enough for Minnesota to recover and get a block. Each team's had lots of opportunities, but has scored very little. Nobody at the free throw line. It's, it's hard to score points if nobody shoots a free throw. Sure. Nobody forcing the action aggressively inside to try to draw some fouls. And for the second time on a possession, a pass headed nowhere. Shamala was trying to find Jason Stamper on the wing, but Stamper had moved down to the baseline, so it was the pass to no one. Turnovers are even at three. That, that's not many, but in a half-court game like this in which the possession clock Works its way down on, on a number of the opportunities. Not going to have many turnovers. Cats have, cats have got to find Vukasic here for a shot. He can see over the defense. He's tall enough. Speaking of him, he finds his way to the baseline and scores. He's got five. He's got a chance, by the way, to be the Big Ten Conference scoring champion. That hasn't been done for a Wildcat since Ray Regalis of East Chicago, Washington, in the northwest part of the state of Indiana, did it back in 1951. We got one of the great former Wildcats in the Twin Cities, Billy McKinney, mm -hmm. does the radio uh, for the Minnesota Timberwolves and does an outstanding job. Well, no name, certainly, from the Big Ten circles. Michael Jenkins in the game now for the Wildcats, and here's Mohamed Hashad. Jenkins was cutting the basket, but he was picked up by Boone. Beware the back door when you face the Northwestern Wildcats. Vukasic, being as tall as he is, can just see over that defense, and he's a good passer to start with, so he can really pick apart your defense. Basket here, Northwestern will have its biggest lead. Lukasic on a smaller man for the moment. Posting low, now coming out high to set a pick. Yes, 
Minnesota not handling the ball very well in its recent possession. Yeah, two in a row unforced errors. The pass by Jamal out of bounds that time. Stamper just could not get the handle. Neither of them were the result of the defense. Go for turnovers now starting to add up a bit after a fine start of protecting the ball. Of course, with both teams playing zone, we don't anticipate many mistakes. But as Jim mentioned, unforced errors recently. A shot and an open look and missed it. Vincent Greer has yet to score for Minnesota. And there's Greer. Last time they played each other, you mentioned Greer waited the second half to get going. Yeah, didn't score in the first half, had 15 in the second half. Somehow, Pucktail got the rebound among three different rebounders, and Greer finally is on the board for Minnesota. Second chance. Gophers capitalized, got Vincent Greer into the scoring column. 19-15 our score. We are approaching four minutes. Vukasic got inside. Good catch, and he'll head to the free throw line. Well, Batron's moving around very nicely. Well, they found him in the weak spot in the zone, on a 2-3 zone, right in the middle of that. You're open. Coach Carmody recognized that, moved Vukasic in there. Last time they didn't convert, this time he drew the foul. Now, Jim, it's not been forever since you've coached, but how the game has changed. Vedran Vukasic, one of 402 foreign players this year on a college basketball roster. Yeah, that, that's been a big change. Uh, the biggest change, Jim, is I never coached with a three-point shot, and that has revolutionized the game where players will turn down a six-footer to get that jump shot, turn down two to get three. Your biggest regret, perhaps? Uh, well, when you have Trent Tucker, you regret that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would, too. Yeah, great, great outside shooter. It's Greer finally in the scoring column, handling the ball for Minnesota. Gophers are down six. They've been down most of the first half. Rico Tucker in the game. A lot of times gives Minnesota some spark. Back to Tollickson for his third hoop of the first half. He was having a nice run toward the end of the season, as you mentioned. Minnesota continues to go zone. Lukasic dropped on to Cote. It's out of bounds, and with that, we have a timeout. Spencer Tollickson, he's been a nice addition to Minnesota's offense off the bench. And three field goals here in the first half already. bigger stars like Dwayne Wade. They've actually negotiated final cut of their highlights. I think that works, Dwayne. Mm. You know what? First we should go with a medium to draw the audience in. Then we should go real wide to give it a sense of context. Dwayne, we're we'll going to need that highlight. When it's ready. Then we'll go well, but ahead. you missed two shows already. When it's ready. You think we can add a couple more defenders with CGI? That would make me look more like a hero, you know, a superhero. You know your friend Cheese? Yeah. That's a nickname, right? Yeah. He smell or something? No. Does he eat a lot of cheese? No, actually, he's lactose intolerant. Well, what's his first name? Mike. What's his last name? Jankowskiewicz. It doesn't make any sense. Okay, one time we were out in the boat, and he pulled out a big old chunk of Limburger, put it on a hook. Apparently, catfish like stinky cheese. Catfish are so dumb. In sports, if you want to know where you're going, LeBron. you've got to know where you've been. Jordan, look at that! On Classic Now, we tie the past to the present. 
from Unitas to Marino to Manning, Wilt to Kareem to Shaq, Koufax to Clements to, well, Clements. Every weeknight, host Josh Elliott brings you the sports news like you've never seen it before. Classic Now, where the past is always present. Weeknights at 7 and 11, only on ESPN Classic. If you don't have ESPN Classic, get Classic Now. Each team shooting the ball 35% from the floor. We remind you this game is produced and distributed by ESPN Regional Television. And as you can see, not an empty seat to be found this evening. 21-17 Wildcats with 3.23 left in the first half and getting to the free throw line. To not a regular occurrence in this game for either team. No, they both both playing that tough zone defense, both very patient at the offensive end. Makes each possession that much more valuable. Michael Jenkins looks for Vukasic right off the timeout of Adron cutting with the basketball to the goal. Great setup by Coach Carmody out of the timeout. The out of bounds play and scored and Rico Tucker turns it over. Adron Vukasic now with nine leading all scores and trying to Win a scoring championship tonight. Nice inside setup by Vukovic on the out of bounds play. Well, I think we have our answer to the emotional loss the other night for Northwestern that the Cats are unaffected by. Vukovic, after being held scoreless early, already has nine. I think that sellout crowd helps that too. They look up and say, "Boy, these fans are still with us." Yes. This is danger time for the Gophers. They've got to come back and answer. A nine-point lead in this kind of game is a huge lead. Alex in, we only weren't doing anything for the Gophers, and that's in a relief role. Well, it looks for Tollickson, and as he was looking, apparently, travel with the ball. Adam questioned it, but it was a good call he, when he went to make the pass as a defender in a way, so he tried to take it back and moved his pivot foot. I think Dan Munson agrees with you. This is a pivotal time for the Gophers, and they need to get themselves together. These unforced errors are adding up. The only offensive threat that's been consistent is the inside with Spencer Tollickson. They're going to probably out of this timeout try to go back to that. Vincent Greer with one basket is their offensive leader but Northwestern has done a great job of locating Vincent Greer. And a great job of forcing turnovers into nine Wildcat points. That's the difference in our game with two minutes and change remaining. Both of these teams play on Thursday in Indianapolis to be determined where. Will they be in the opening game at high noon or in the middle game on Thursday? And the winner will get an opportunity to move into that 8-9 slot. You know, Penn State and Michigan will await these two teams. We just don't know in which order. Penn State, a lot of success against Northwestern. Winning twice, Minnesota forcing a turnover. Here's Greer spotting the basket. And they flushed it. Gophers came out man-to-man -man out of the timeout. Northwestern is not ready for the man-to-man -man defense. Good call by Dan Munson during the timeout. Leads to a live ball turnover and one of the few turnovers Northwestern has. Minute 45 in the first half. Cats will use some time. Puck Carroll and Vukovic trying to give him a little body. That time too much body. Uh, exactly what he did. Take a look at Vincent Greer playing defense and able to take the ball from one end to another. Look at him. Explode to the basket. Yeah, Eric pass by the Wildcats. Vincent Greer has great anticipation. Vukasic, the last time he will play before the home crowd. Coming up at halftime, the coach will choose his all-conference first and second team. And his pick for MVP. We'll learn more about each school and take a look back at the first half highlights. And coaches are here. Yes. 
Can you give us a hint? <laughs> well, that would ruin everything, wouldn't it? You know, I had to vote for Coach of the Year those 11 years I was at Minnesota, and I automatically voted for whoever won the conference. And it's, it just took all the mystery out of it. Sure, sure. It's easy, but it's, it's a good pick, don't you think? Yeah. If you're picked to win it, you still have to go out and do it. And Ohio State this year certainly wasn't picked to win it, but it looks like they got a great chance to do it. Or at least coaching. Wasn't even picking the top three. Tucker tries to penetrate, and he might have got bailed out. Yeah, the official had his choice of double dribble or steps and Carmody. called the foul. That was the third choice. Carmody <laughs> liked the first two to change. <laughs> He wasn't thrilled about the third option. Only 14 fouls on the Wildcats who do not foul much. So no shooting situation for the Gophers, but a fresh 35, an errant pass intended for Tollickson. Catch back at the break. Michael Jenkins in the basket. And somehow Greer got up to deflect it. On the other end, Abu Shamala. Taken away from Collison. The action starting to pick up a bit. And now Rashad commits a turnover. The Western still get the ball back. Big hop by Greer. And a blocking foul on Northwestern. Vincent Greer, he found an opening there and was able to get to the hoop. Vincent Greer has been very active the last five minutes. Great defensive play here. Gets the block, starts the fast break the other way. And Bill Carmody does not like the up and down action that broke out there for about two minutes. That was a good no call. That was a goaltending. Vincent Greer's average is 15 per game. It took a long while, though, before he got his first points. Early in the year, Vincent Gurr had a broken bone in his shooting hand. Did not seem serious. He didn't miss that much time, but it took him a long time to get confidence in his shot bag. And it's just the last month that he started to play like the Vincent Gurr of a year ago. That could be quite a lingering injury. What injury can be worse for a shooter, huh? Yeah, particularly with... Uh, player like Vincent Greer depends so much on his quickness. Minnesota can force a turner or miss here. They can get back in this first half. Gophers will get the ball back with about four seconds remaining, but Northwestern may use a little time quicker. Instead, they turn it over. Hell ball situation keeps it in the hands, though, here of Northwestern as the arrow favors them. Ball gets knocked loose by Adam Boone, goes to the floor. Vukasic in there, Cote, finally get the hell ball call. Seacat comes in the game for Northwestern. He is their fine three-point shooter, and they may look for him here. Last time they caught Vukovic with a layup, and Coach Carmody's going to time out. Can't carry it over to the second no. half anyway, so he's going to use it. And they'll have 15 seconds on the possession to work with. 19.9 for the opening half. Dan Munson's team is still in the hole, but seems to be playing a little bit better over the last three minutes. Defense has picked up. They've got into some passing lane, forced some turnovers, got out on a couple breaks. And uh, it, it's what they need to do if they're going to get back in this basketball game. Last time out of a timeout, out of bounds play, Vukasic had a layup. We'll see if they come back with the same play. Or if they take enough time on the clock, shoot toward the end of the possession, and then force Minnesota to go the length of the floor in very little time. I think it's layup or last shot. It's one of the two. If it's not <laughs> layup, they're going to hold it for the last shot. Not much guessing required when it comes to Northwestern's offense. No. Mohamed Ashad did not play the first time these two teams met, recovering from an appendectomy. Looks like it's going to be last shot. <laughs> That's a long way from a layup. Yes. Under nine for the possession. Now 10 seconds remaining in the first half, and here's Mohamed Ashad. 
Good catch and shoot by Moore. Here's Adam Boone trying to beat the buzzer. Got it! What a play by Adam Boone. Adam Boone had it timed perfectly. We yep. get we get six points in wow. about a three second span. Adam Boone over the timeline, defender in front, just rises up, leans in. Yes, sir, it's good. And it's out of his hands. The officials will go take a look at it, but it is a good basket. Got it off with about counted well for more than half of Northwestern's points. The player I think we see him right now is Mohammed Hashad. Only two points the first half. He's been playing great for Northwestern in recent games. I look for him to have a big second half. And how about Minnesota defending Craig Moore in the second half? Yeah, they're, they're going to have to push up and locate him on the three-point line. Cats 1-3-1 one, one gave Minnesota lots of trouble in the first meeting. And to start the second half, Minnesota turns the ball over. Try to skip pass from Boone to the Hargrove on the wing. Just sailed out of bounds. Here's Craig Moore with those three threes the coach alluded to, and now his shot. Doyle with his back to the basket, and he can pass out of that offense, and as he makes the move to the hoop, he is called for the hook. Yeah, I don't know why inside players do that. The official is standing two feet away on the baseline. They just don't let you hook with that offhand. It's called all the time. Couldn't call correctly. Hasn't changed since the years you were coaching, <laughs> No, right? no. That's still a foul. Here's Greer. Let's see if he can get off in the second half. Averaging 15 a game. Good ball movement by Minnesota, but Stamper left it a little, a little short. Good hustle, though, to the ball, and the Gophers keep it. Adam Boone tries a three. Rebound Stamper. A third opportunity. Puckell inside. And a foul called on Bernard Cote. Good possession by Minnesota. They had some good looks at the basket against Northwestern's matchup zone. Ends up with Pucktell getting to the foul line. You see the miss. Stamper, nice relay inside to Zach Pucktell, who drew the foul. Coach, Minnesota never got close to the bonus in the first half, but had three two-shot opportunities. This makes the fourth of the game. Getting to the foul line is, is key. Any close game is going to be decided at that free throw line. The quicker you can get into that bonus, the more pressure you can put on that defense. Pactel, you know his story. From Harvard to Minnesota and eventually back to Harvard where he'll complete his degree. It's a trade-off. Pactel gives him the inside defense. Tollickson gives him the inside scoring. Now some pressure, and Bukas is able to come up with it. No foul from Jason Stamper. We'll play on. Here's Moore with that hot shooting first half. Straight man-to-man -man defense out of the locker room for Minnesota. Only five seconds left. Doyle blows past everybody. Tim Doyle's got a funny shot. He releases it on the way up. If there's no pause at the top, that way he made it pay. He's the old man on this team, 23 <laughs> years of age. Minnesota gets saved. Mike Greer and Boone comes back in the activities, wincing a little bit as he came on top of the scorer's table. That was a great save by Adam Boone. Leads to a Minnesota basket for Vincent Greer. Gophers back within six, 33-27. We're ready to go back and play defense. Minnesota shooting started to pick up, nearing 40%. Wildcats got to find the rhythm again, playing man-to-man -man defense after playing all zone the first half. Good save by Vatron, 10 to work with. Jason Stamper did not play in the opening loss against Northwestern. He was had a knee injury that kept him out for a good part of the early conference season. 
And of course, Puck Tell was uh, did not get in that basketball game. He was strictly a backup player at that time. Stamper in that big game against Michigan State, shooting five or six from the floor. Puck Tell, equally a good performance with 13 against the Spartans. Michigan State finishing with a home loss today and eight and eight in the conference. That's that's surprising. You know that they had a lot of remnants from that Final Four team of a year ago. Their top three scorers. But just did not rebound the basketball like we're used to seeing. Lots of offensive rebounds here in the second half for both teams. You don't want to give the team a second opportunity in the low scoring basketball game. And especially Northwestern, which will use some time on its next possession. Okay, great pass to Vukasic and a foul on Minnesota. That was a gorgeous pass from the junior. Good timing play. Cote in the corner. Vukasic waited till his man turned his head and took the break. Here's pass the corner. Just waits for his man to turn his head. Goes to the basket and draws the foul. Vukasic, who helped bail out Northwestern against Iowa a couple of weeks ago, got the ultimate compliment from Steve Alford, the Hawkeye coach, who said afterwards, we had no answer for this guy. He's a tough matchup. He plays every place on the floor. You see him at the point guard. You see him on the wing. The middle against the zone. He just moves all over. He's hard to locate. Mo Argro with a rest for Minnesota. Vukasic's future, where do you see him after Northwestern? It'll be interesting to see if, if he, he can play at that pro level. He certainly leads the Big Ten in three-point percentage. And for a guy that big to go outside and score, you know, he, he's got to have a future. And he's an outstanding passer. He will get a good look in the NBA. Eight-point lead for the Wildcats, 35-27. Gopher's trying to find something inside here. Left it short, though. comes Timmy Doyle. Cote is going to try a three. Almost got it. And how about his shot? Well, he has not looked to score much, but he's been outstanding on the boards, picking up the loose balls. Gives the Wildcats another fresh shot clock. The shot has done that more than once on the offensive glass. Doyle backing his man down and spinning and scoring. Two big inside hoops this half for Timmy Doyle. And you know that will help reopen the outside for Northwestern. Ten point hole for Minnesota. Started off well in the second half. No easy looks right now for the Gophers. All cats moving their feet on defense. No openings. They're missing a rebound, but our Cote is on Northwestern right now. His shot was looking down court, and Coach Carmody just jumped up and put both hands out, <laughs> gave him the stop signal. Follow Puck Tell. 20 feet away from the basket and a timeout. Northwestern's lead has reached 10, 37, 27, and Tim Doyle has been going to work here in the second half. My name is Izzy Paskowitz, and I've been running surf camps for autistic kids for seven years. What's perfect for us to see that screaming and the kicking when they go out, and when they turn around and ride that wave in, it's just nothing like it. And there's the parents, the tears in their eyes, saying, we've had a lot of tough times, but today was just a perfect day.
Northwestern trying to make it five consecutive wins over Minnesota. This game is produced and distributed by ESPN Regional Television. With the coach, Jim Dutcher, I'm Jim Barber. Northwestern band and its students enjoying what they have seen so far this evening on senior night. Before a great crowd here at Northwestern. And it has helped this home team, as we mentioned a couple times, coming off a very tough, both physical and emotional loss to the Buckeyes. Tough to get that energy going, but the Wildcats have found some energy. I agree. If you caught Bill Carmody's radio show on WGN after the game, I mean, he was just uh, lost for words. And it said on more couple of occasions, you know, all we had to do was make one stop against Ohio State and couldn't get it done. Coach Munson's put his perimeter shooters, Dan Coleman and Shamala, on the court. They're probably his two best outside and forwards. And Collinson turns it over on the inside. In a game where possessions are so important and valued because there aren't many, these unforced errors are, are killing the Gophers. Yeah, they had nine in the first half, and four of those were unforced. The defense had nothing to do with it. 11 turnovers now for the game for Minnesota. And Northwestern has been able to score a number of points off of those turnovers. And they'll take a turnover and they'll use some time on their next possession, much like this one. If that were a field goal, it would have been wide right. Yeah. Looks like the wind might have got a hold of it. <laughs> Talk about turnovers, they were Michigan's undoing today. They were in the 20s for turnovers in a crucial game with Indiana. What about Indiana's chances for the NCAA tournament? Think they've uh, positioned themselves? They get a lot of weight to how you're playing at the end of the year. And Indiana is playing very well right now. Uh, probably the best they, they've played all year. They're getting contributions from a lot of different players. They're shooting the ball well. Hanging in tough on defense. They, they had a couple nine-point deficits in the second half in Ann Arbor and still came back and won a very close ball game. I think once Mike Davis made it official, the guys have now started to relax and come together. How do you not take a team seated fifth in the Big Ten tournament? Good point. Hard to overlook them. Still a conference with the top RPI. Boone, a little penetrate, pitch, three-pointer by Coleman. Well done by Adam Boone and Dan Coleman. That's the shot that Coleman can make. He had a very good half against Northwestern in their, their loss in Williams Arena. A shot penetrating and scoring Muhammad Hashad. No, we haven't called his name much offensively. He's been doing other things like rebounding a ball, but on that sequence, took it strong. He really split the defense. There's two defenders. He really gets held by Tollickson on the drive, able to score, count the basket, and go to the free throw line. Negates the three by Boone moments ago that pulled Minnesota within seven. Hashad is key to their defense. He plays the point on their matchup zone. You can see where he's out there by himself at the point. Makes it tough to swing that ball from wing to wing because he's so hard to pass over. In the passing lane. Now speaking of passing, Boone tried to get one off. Kicked by Vukasic. He's got good wingspan, good anticipation. He's the perfect player to play the point on their defense. Muhammad Hashad, who had an emergency appendectomy in late December, returned to the Wildcats lineup in January. And is back to full speed. He's had a couple of breakout games this year. Sterling Williams in the game had a 15-point effort, and Shamala hits the wing jumper against the zone. Minnesota's stroke is starting to pick up as, again, the Gophers are back within seven. Now you have to go if you're Minnesota back to playing defense and make sure you're not burned by a backdoor cut and penetration. Cote gets around his man, but missed it. Rebound taken down by Coleman. And this is the closest right now that the Gophers can get in a long time. 
They've got some good wing shooters in Shamala and Coleman. Had a good look to Tollick, so enough to just show it. So much this team now within seven at 40 to 33. If I'm Coach Carmody right now, I want to see Vukasic get a shot at the basket. He's their leader. He's your go-to. You got to find a shot for him. It was 13 for the game, operating on the right side of the offense for the moment. Will Scott goes back to the hoop. Doyle will try a three. Not necessarily the guy they want shooting at this sequence. And Minnesota, another opportunity to get within two scores. Come off the talents and the Minnesota's within five at 40 to 35. Nice step-in move by Dan Coleman. He split the top of the zone. Defense had to come cover him. He dropped it off to Tollickson. Again, you got to find your leading scorer, Vukasic. What's going to be Vukas back in our offensively? I think just a lot more poise. Two win three-pointers, one by Coleman, one by Shamala. Spread the defense. There's your player. And off the missed three, a long rebound to Doyle. You mentioned it earlier, when you hit a couple threes, the zone gets spread a lot wider, opens up some penetration to the basket. Well, let's see if Northwestern can find its leader. Here's Vukasic. Has to dish it off to Jenkins. Doyle to the basket, left it short. But again, a, another possession opportunity for Northwestern. Munson are pretty upset with that. You don't want to give Northwestern second or third prize at all. There was nobody really in position to get that rebound. It's, it really spit out to the deep corner. So it looked like Northwestern's been an offense for the last five minutes here. <laughs> Minnesota's been patient at this end. They've gotten some good looks at the basket. to go. There's a 10 point Northwestern lead. A hoop here cuts it to three. And before Coleman can do anything, he is pushed. And with that, a timeout. A momentum has switched to the Gophers. They find themselves back in business. 40-35, halfway through the second half. Some of the bigger stars, like Dwayne Wade, they've actually negotiated final cut of their highlights. I think that works, Dwayne. Mm. You know what? First we should go with a medium to draw the audience in. Then we should go real wide to give it a sense of context. Dwayne, we're we'll going to need that highlight. When it's ready. Then we'll go well, but ahead. you missed two shows already. When it's ready. You think we can add a couple more defenders with CGI? That would make me look more like a hero, you know, a superhero. You know your friend Cheese? Yeah. That's a nickname, right? Yeah. He smell or something? No. Does he eat a lot of cheese? No, actually, he's lactose intolerant. Well, what's his first name? Mike. What's his last name? Jankowskiewicz. It doesn't make any sense. Okay, one time we were out in the boat, and he pulled out a big old chunk of Limburger, put it on a hook. Apparently, catfish like stinky cheese. Catfish are so dumb. In sports, if you want to know where you're going, LeBron. you've got to know where you've been. Jordan, look at that! On Classic Now, we tie the past to the present. From Unitas to Marino to Manning, Wilt to Kareem to Shaq, Koufax to Clemens to, well, Clemens. Every weeknight, host Josh Elliott brings you the sports news like you've never seen it before. Classic Now, where the past is always present. Weeknights at 7 and 11, only on ESPN Classic. If you don't have ESPN Classic, get Classic Now. The Gophers were 20 points off its bench back in the game within five. Now if Northwestern should win this game. The Wildcats will open up against Penn State in Indianapolis at the high noon game on Thursday for the Big Ten tournament. And Minnesota would open with Michigan. But if Minnesota wins, the Gophers get a crack at Penn State, a team they beat by 20 earlier in the season. 
and Michigan and Northwestern will revisit themselves. Minnesota, by the way, holding the tiebreaker with Penn State for positioning. Bill Carmody can't be thrilled with what has happened as Minnesota's worked its way back in the game and a chance to cut it to three or less. During the regular season, Michigan beat Minnesota twice. Last time in Ann Arbor, they had a 35 to 6 lead Ooh. against the Gophers. Ooh. And of course, Penn State beat Northwestern twice. It's going to be a great deal of fun in Indianapolis. I don't know how many upsets we might see, but they're going to be several. <laughs> yeah, the, the bottom part of this league really has the ability to beat the upper tier teams. We've seen it throughout the year. Looks like Minnesota doing a better job of defending more here in the second half, Coach. Yeah, they're pushing out on perimeter, and Minnesota's starting to penetrate the top seam of the zone right here. Greer had to go down and out. I would have cut it to three. They've decided to dribble drive that top seam, and they've been able to get inside the northwestern zone. The Wildcats have managed just nine second half points. They drive Lucas Hitch has 13, followed by Dan Coleman out front. That's the Gophers' 15 foul in the second half. That foul by Coleman, because Lucas Hitch was not going to the basket. He was going parallel to the basket. You just let him go. You have to be aware of that, and the fact that Northwestern hasn't missed a free throw tonight. Nine of nine. And I'm leaning in the air for the Mohamed Ishaan, the old-fashioned three-pointer coming up. Strong upper body for Mohamed Mashad. He got fouled. He had to re-grip it, take it down, put it back up, and score. There he gets right in this vision, but he's strong enough to muscle it back up into the basket. Good inside move. I always admired this kid. He had to go through some fasting for his religious beliefs, typically during the Big Ten season, which left him very weary and very tired. And still able to keep it going. And tonight he finishes his career, at least in terms of game played at Northwestern, before a huge house and putting together a pretty good effort. Nice move by Lucas at that time. He couldn't get the rebound, so he tapped it deep to a teammate. He does a lot of the little things that go unnoticed. Especially when he's not scoring the ball. That's the way this game started for him. He has 13 now, but just three of 10 shooting. Has not looked to score. Nice backdoor cut and a good feed on the backdoor cut. Momentum back to Northwestern, and if this continues, don't be surprised if Munson uses another Minnesota timeout. Minnesota had two chances to get within three. Instead, the lead is to nine. But Shamala, big time answer. And Minnesota's bench has been huge tonight. The freshman has no hesitancy to put that shot up there. Two big threes against the zone. Where would Minnesota be without its backup scoring support tonight? Yeah, it really has come off. Lucas is posting low. That means somebody's open off the double team. Moore can't find his touch in the second half. Good ball reversal. Did, did not hit the shot. And the Wildcats settle back in the zone. Pollock's in at the free throw line, spinning the basket, and he draws a foul. 7 9 to go in the game. Still very much undecided as to who will move into that 8-9 spot on Thursday.
Scott. Mm hmm. Uh, did you possibly switch chairs with me? No, not me. Are you sure? Yeah. Good luck finding your chair, everyone. Okay. Okay. ABC News Now. Finally, something designed for your hectic life. Imagine programs 15 minutes long and tightly packed with all the good stuff you actually want. Hit the ground running with ABC News Now. ABC News Now. 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 ABC News Now. Get it now. Now. ABC News. Anytime. Anywhere. Get it now. Now imagine being able to get it all. Anytime and anywhere. Hey, that's why you need ABC News Now. Just two games left in the regular season for the Big Ten Conference. This is one of them. Purdue and Ohio State tomorrow, and the Buckeyes with a win. Win the conference outright, and Purdue shocks everybody and beats the Buckeyes. It'll be a three-way tie for the conference championship. As you know, the Minnesota Northwestern winner moves into a tie with Penn State. The loser drops into position number 10. That's everything you need to know about the league. Yeah, if you want to know what's great about college basketball, Jim, here are two 5-10 and ten teams going no place in the conference race, but they're playing it like it's the Big Ten Championship. Sure. To them, it means everything. And just great effort by both clubs. Coach, coaches should feel good about that effort. Certainly a credit to the way they have prepared for this evening. Alexson, uh, I don't know, is that a shooter's roll? That ball just died on the rim. Minnesota just keeps hanging around. They go down nine. Mm -hmm. Got a chance here to get it down to four. They're within striking distance all the time. Lukasic and Stamper got tied up. Got ourselves a game again as Minnesota down nine at one point has crept back within four, 44 to 40. And the big difference in this game made threes by the Gophers in the second half. Minnesota has improved its outside shooting after a very rough start to this game. No question. That's what's got them back in this game. The Outside three-pointer by Coleman, a couple by Shamala. It's loosened up the defense. You said earlier you thought Northwestern had lost some of its offensive touch. I think a, a lot of it is the Gophers have really ratcheted up the defensive pressure. They're in Moore's face with Adam Boone. He's not getting a good look at the threes. Often do you see a graphic of a 25 to 3 edge from the bench? Yeah, no, it's Minnesota is deep. They're coming off the bench with players who were starters. Shamala was a starter, Coleman was a starter, Pollockson was a starter. So they're they're coming off the bench with players who have been starters this year. Minnesota in position to win this game without Vincent Greer's offense. In our star watch tonight, we highlighted him. He's been held to eight. And most significantly, not many touches for Vince Greer this evening. No, the Wildcats have located Vincent Greer, but you have to give up something. If you're going to double-team him, you're going to leave somebody else open. In the second half, Minnesota's been a much better job of finding the open shooter. Free throw shooting tonight for Northwestern has been superb, 11 of 12. And the Wildcats are in the bonus the rest of the game. Just 14 fouls for Northwestern, which is typical. They're having trouble against the shot. Now Bowen, difficult three. In and out. How about Shamala with a rebound, though? Follows it up, missed it. Tap back out to Stanford, and as Jason was going up for another try, he was fouled. Good pressure on the offensive glass. Shamala kept it alive. Stamper was there to clean it up and draw the foul. He'll get to the line for two. You can see Shamala working inside. Doesn't score. The ball's kept alive. Stamper claims the rebound. Jason Stamper is a 53% shooter from the line. Odds are he'll make this one. One out of two. If you're right? 50%. Is that the way you figured it when you coached? <laughs> you just sit there and hope. Yeah. As a coach, you're worrying about them going empty over two. Right. Still, this is a difference of two possessions. That's a pretty good spot for Minnesota to be in, considering how it started. You just got to.
keep working at the defensive end. Boone has done a good job on Craig Moore this half. He's not had that open look at the three-pointer. This time, a shot on the give and go to the basket foul, but he is returning to the free throw line. That was a great pass by Vince Scott. We saw him earlier hit Vukasic with a back door. This time he hits a shot with the back door. The ability to make that difficult pass is key. They draw Vukasic, the Big Ten's leading scorer with 15 this evening. Also four assists, five rebounds. And most of them have been spectacular for Hashad. Four in a row for the, from the foul line for Mohamed Hashad. Coleman back in. He gave Minnesota a big boost his last time he was on the floor. Was able to split some seams on the zone. And at six foot eight, he gets a good look at the basket. Five forty-five for the game. Kick ball. Minnesota will reload the offense, trailing by seven. The shot thought he should have had that one, but rather than with his hands, he got it with his foot. Northwestern just a 66% shooting team for the free throw line, and that's a foul her shot doesn't need to make. Although Bill Carmody didn't think it was a foul. It's not one you question, you know, when you when you body him with the hip, they're gonna call it. Underneath you can do that, but out in the open, you just can't get away with it. I'm gonna say the cat 66% from the line of 13 of 14 tonight. Good post defense by Vince Scott. Tollickson had the easy two. Scott was able to deflect the ball out of bounds. Takes a shoot three. Shamala, he is now four made threes in this game. Jamal Abu Shamala shooting Minnesota back within four. He's got a good looking score. He glanced at the bench, said, So you didn't recruit me, eh? <laughs> so, no, he's, he's been a big lift for this Gopher team. Lucas hits for three to answer. Yes, sir. That's what all conference players do. They answer the challenge. We're back to Boone. He tries it three. The offenses are starting to pick up for both teams. Timeout, Minnesota. 4.56 for the game. 51-47 Northwestern. You're right. It's not for the conference championship, but there's a lot of pride out there. In Mr. Erlacher. Oh, yeah, no problem. Happy to help. Join us in March for ESPN The Weekend at the Walt Disney World Resort. There's something for every fan. Visit ESPNTheWeekend.com today. Presented by Speedstick 24 7. Oh. Yeah? Yeah. Right, There's an old football injury. Tore my rotator cuff against the Giants in 88. Yeah. Gotta play hurt, though, right? Oh, absolutely. Actually, I. I burnt my tongue on some lentil soup last night. It really hurts. Be okay to do the show? Oh, yeah. I'll suck it up. What makes them different makes them great. Mike and Mike in the Morning on ESPN Radio. Ready to elevate your golf game to the next level? Learn from the professionals at ESPN Golf Schools presented by Lexus. Enroll in the three-club tour and receive a Nike Sasquatch driver, SV Wedge, and T100 putter free. ESPN Golf Schools instruction developed by world-renowned teaching pro Hank Haney. Call 1-800-642-5528 or register online at ESPNGolfSchools.com. Improve your game through personalized instruction and the latest in equipment from Nike Golf. ESPN Golf Schools presented by Lexus. Guys, if you're not nervous, you're not alive. If you get an opportunity like this, you gotta be. I'm gonna leave it all right here. They're not getting screened. Don't get screened. No, baby. What, what, what are you doing here? It ought to hurt to get an opportunity like that. And we didn't get it done.
at Ohio State, one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country, to 6 of 24. But this evening, the Gophers have hit 7 already, and Jamal Abu Shamala is smoking. Shamala, the, the walk-on freshman from Shakopee, Minnesota, has great confidence in his shot. A pure stroke. He just lines it up and lets it go. So he's definitely kept Minnesota in this basketball game. They trail by four with just under five minutes to go. And in case you weren't aware, the freshman no longer a walk-on now, a scholarship player. Yeah. I don't mean you being aware, Coach. I'm sure you know as well as all Gopher fans about his move from walk-on to scholarship, but well-deserved, I think. Yeah, he's earned it. Turnover, Northwestern. Minnesota can get within a basket. 51-47, this game is tightened up and a foul by Michael Jenkins. And the significance of that is that is team foul number seven. So now Minnesota is in the one and one. Pretty nervous time for Bill Carbon. He went through that Wednesday when Ohio State came back. Yeah, it was a, a tough loss. They've led from start to finish here, seven points at halftime. Have gotten it up as high as 10, but the Gophers have hung in there and made some very key shots, particularly Shamala. Minnesota's bench, the difference here in the second half. And the Gophers have it down to a one possession game. And Bill Carmody almost can't bear to watch. <laughs> 51 for the Wildcats, 49 for the Gophers. Minnesota defensively has really picked up their man-to-man -man defense. They've located the shooters, make it a lot more difficult to get a good look at the basket. The only answer has been Hashad on some basket cuts. Here's Mohammed with the ball. 15 on the possession. Lukasic double team for the moment in the corner. Kick out to Scott. Down the five. Scott's going to force a three. And up for the rebound, Shamali. He's done everything tonight. He can help the Gophers into a tie. Gophers have done it without Vincent Greer contributing. Sure have. Minnesota scored five threes in the second half, and Northwestern has lost its touch. The coach told you about that when it began. Three and a half for the game, ten for the possession. Greer crossing over on the dribble, and he gets fouled. And when he comes back, Vincent Greer will be shooting for the tie. 's and I've been running surf camps for autistic kids for seven years what's perfect for us to see that screaming and the kicking when they go out and when they turn around and ride that wave in it's just nothing like it and there's the parents the tears in their eyes saying we've had a lot of tough times but today was just a perfect day
That's a concerned Northwestern fan who's uh, hoping to make it and hoping that overtime doesn't come about. She looks a little tired. <laughs> 30 to three Gophers bench scoring tonight. They've gotten little from their starters, but guys like Spencer Tollickson and Jamal Bushamala have come big for Minnesota. When Minnesota got off to an 0-6 start in the Big Ten, they made some changes. They started Shamala, they started Zach Pucktail, Coleman went to the bench, Tollickson went to the bench, but now they're coming off the bench to play significant minutes. 30 to 3. That's a big margin, Jim, off that right bench. Here's a good free throw shooter for Minnesota. And the next one will pull them within a tie. And they have not been tied with Northwestern since we were at 4 4. 51 51. They haven't been tied with Northwestern in 2005 or 6. So this is the first time they've caught up to the Wildcats in the win at Minnesota. Northwestern led from the opening tip, and they've led here up until this point of the game. We highlighted that at the beginning in a game which the Cats led by 13 and a half times at the barn. They have beaten Minnesota the last four times out, but this one very much in jeopardy. And Bill Carbody uses a timeout. 13 seconds, by the way, left on this possession. They'll look for another shooter to put in the game with the timeout. We knew it was going to be low scoring, just the way these clubs play defense, the way they're patient on the offensive end. It's a game that's in the 50s. Uh, probably a first team to 60s is going to win this basketball game if anybody can get there. Just over three minutes left. It's turned out to be a very entertaining, very competitive basketball. Everything here is identical on the reset. The possession arrow favors Northwestern. Great support from the Wildcats student section this evening who have come out to honor their seniors. And Welsh Ryan Arena, when this game started, did not have an open seat. Most of the folks uh, stayed around. 13 on the possession. A shot, shot blocked. Good inbounds play, but Vincent Greer was there for the rejection. Northwestern will try again. Doyle looking and looking. Bukasic on the cut, rolls it in. That was a smart move by Vukovic. He faked like he was going to go deep to receive the pass and then took the cut down the lane and scored. In his final game at Northwestern's home floor. And now he goes down, but we play on. 2.45 in the game. Bad pass. Knocked in the backcourt. Doyle dies for the ball. Minnesota still has it and still has time. 10 on the possession. Boom for the lead. The rebound, Jason Stamper. And as Stamper starts to move on the baseline, he got bumped. Good offensive rebound on the weak side board. Adam Boone forced the long three-pointer from the wing. Stamper on the offside board was able to get the rebound. Coach, these two teams have combined for 20 offensive rebounds tonight. They've gone after it. Carmody wanted the charge. He thought that Vukovic got buried by Greer, but there was no call on the play. Jason Stamper could retie the game. But he missed the one and one. And they all come down to who can make free throws at the crucial point in the ball game. Yeah, Northwestern has done a better job of that to this point, Coach. Three-pointer for Moore. He's missed all of his three-point attempts in the second half. And another opportunity for Minnesota to tie the game or take the lead. Cats have to be worried about Jamal Abushamala, who has really struck the ball well in the second half. Great fake by Greer. Got it deflected inside Stamper. Northwestern can't believe it, but a foul called. And Jason Stamper is heading back to the free throw line. And this time, he's going to shoot it twice. The outside official made that call. The, the baseline official that was right there 
waved it as a good good play, good block, but the outside official came in with the call. You can call it from any position, but normally <laughs> the official closest to the call makes the call. Correct. Stamper this time, two opportunities. That's the first one. Pretty calm at the free throw line. Shoots into the wave and ties the game again. Two huge free throws for Minnesota. Under two minutes to play in the game and we're dead even. And as you saw in a reset, each team with three timeouts remaining. Stamper on Vukasic on the right side of this possession. Here's Vedron. Doyle will give him that look. Now Vukasic from the free throw line. Down to five as Doyle tries to make a move. Still trying to maneuver. Missed the shot. And that's going to be goaltending. They call the goal, Ken, and the ball was not going in, but it was still above the rim. They're not going to let you go and knock it away on a shot that had clearly been missed. Coach Munson, in the air of the official, it made the call, but it was a proper call. How big with 80 seconds left in the game is that? You see the shot go up. It's off the rim and is touched. Still in the cylinder, and they're not going to let you go up and touch it. Helps Northwestern regain the lane. Let's see what answer Minnesota has. Greer has to give up his dribble. And the Gophers use the timeout. In the second half, Minnesota's out rebounded Northwestern 19 to 8. That's allowed Dan Bunce's team to get back into this one. But the goaltending moments ago has put Northwestern up by two. Minnesota's operated much more efficiently offensively. They found the three-point shooters. They've gotten on some second and third shots. Allowed them to get back in this basketball game. Two points with just over a minute to go. It's up for grabs. Northwestern shooting the double bonus. Minnesota still in the one and bonus. Gophers have two remaining timeouts. The Wildcats with three. This has turned out to be a really good second half. The normal call for Minnesota out of a timeout is to go to their best offensive player. Normally, that's Vincent Greer because he's quick to the basket. He, he draws the foul as he goes to the hoop. Shamala is basically an outside shooter, and there's a bigger gamble when you, when you put it up from out there. So I really look for penetration by Vincent Greer with 19 seconds to go on the shot clock. Lately, Minnesota's been doing a better job of getting to the free throw line, so if they are able to get that ball inside and draw a foul, they'll have a chance to retie this game from the line. Gophers are 14 of 19 in free throw shooting. Northwestern considerably better, 13 of 14. We're deep in the second half from Northwestern. A good finish to the regular season for both of these teams. Jim Barber and Jim Dutcher. Ten seconds to shoot, and they're way outside with their offense. Down to five. Greer for the tie. Leaves it short. Taken by Northwestern. Minnesota doesn't have to foul at this point, but does have to D up. Wildcats cannot run out the shot clock. There's about a 12 second difference between the game shot and the shot clock, but they're going to run it down to the last kick. Nickel Jenkins running the show right now for the Wildcats. Bill Carmody calls the play. And he'll use a timeout with 10 remaining on the shot clock and 22 for the game. What do you look for from Carmody on this call? Well, Northwestern does not have a post up player. So they can't take it down to someone posted. They're going to have to do it with someone cutting to the basket. And the, the player that's done the best job of that has been Hashad. 
If somebody's going to up an outside shot, it's probably going to be more Vukasic, but their best penetrator definitely is Mohamed Hashad. And the Wildcats have not shot the ball well from the outside. Six of 23 shooting from the arc for just 26%. Certainly not the higher percentage shot. And they had five of those the first half, so they really have struggled from outside this second half. Carmody's team was in this position the other night against Ohio State. If you don't score, you come back and prevent the three. You don't want to give a good look at the basket that's going to get you beat. Deep in the backcourt, a shot. Time running out on the possession. Down to five. Now Doyle. Bukasic going to throw it up. Airballed Possession clock expires on Northwestern. And so Minnesota will have 12 seconds left in the second half to either tie the game or win it. I don't think that's the shot that they drew up oh. over at the timeout. But to Minnesota's credit, they stepped up, took away the outside shot. All that was left was for a desperation toss by Vukovic, did not draw iron. And so Minnesota down two with 12 seconds. Coach Munson's got a pick. Do we go for two in the tie or do we go for three in the win? Normally you're going to go for the tie, try to get try to get a basket to get this thing into overtime. If you remember the other night, Ohio State had the game-winning basket on a drive to the hoop by Ron Lewis, and now Minnesota in an opportunity to tie the game or win it, as the coach mentioned, with a three. Minnesota has stroked the ball very well from the arc in the second half. And that stopped it. Carmody didn't get the other night. He's hoping for right here. I'm surprised that the Wildcats aren't coming down to put token pressure. Now they're trying to come forward a little bit. And Doyle's saying, don't let them roll that ball. Ball game right here. Ten seconds left. Coleman for the lead. Missed it. Rayvon Doyle and a foul on Minnesota. Look for the win. Dan Coleman, a wide open shot on the wing, was long. Tim Doyle there for the rebound. Quick foul by Minnesota, so with 5.5 seconds, Tim Doyle goes to the line for two. Doyle is a 70% shooter. He is two of two, and the Wildcats have missed just once in 14 attempts from the free throw line decision for Bill Carmody, do you put your players at the foul line and he's chosen to do that. But you got to get more in Jenkins deep. He's got the memory of Boone throwing in that long three yeah. and a half in his mind. It'd be hard to forget that. This next free throw could decide the game. Doyle trying to make it a two-possession game, and Minnesota wants the timeout. We often hear the coaches do that to freeze the shooter, do they? Yeah, they're trying, and then he's got to have possession. If he makes it and we're down four, you know, what do we do? If he misses it and we get the ball, what do we do? If Northwestern hangs on, the Wildcats will move into that opening game in Indianapolis on Thursday. These two teams came in tied in the conference at 5 and 10, so the winner would get an opportunity to play against Penn State, and Northwestern is in that spot if it can hang on in the remaining five and a half seconds. And they both get to play teams that they've lost to twice. The Wolverines beat the Gophers twice, yes. and Penn State has beaten Northwestern twice. Penn State gave Northwestern its first conference loss after the Cats had a nice start to the league at 2-0. and Biggest free throw of the game right here for Doyle. All net. Two possession game. And time running out on Minnesota. Northwestern's magic over the Gophers continues. Five in a row. Good game tonight. Yeah, for two teams just playing for pride and for seeding, both teams gave it a good effort. Wildcats made the free throws down the stretch when they had to have them. 
and walk out with a four-point win. We will see both of these teams in Indianapolis on Thursday. Major on Vukasic leads Northwestern in scoring with 20. And Tim Doyle contributes magnificently along with Craig Moore's outside shooting. The Cats beat the Gophers 57-53. We hope you enjoyed it. We appreciate you joining us tonight from Northwestern where the Cats close out the home season. With